And let's uh, keep it in the KU Wave News uh, Zoom room where at 858 uh, we have the chief of the Guam Police Department, uh, Chief Stephen Ignacio, joining us. Thank you for joining us this morning, Chief. Hi, Chief. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. Happy Hump Day Wednesday. <laughs> That's it. Humping away this morning. How you doing? Um, it's Wednesday. I guess I'm doing okay. Right on. Okay. I just asked you on, Chief, because Sabrina has a bunch of tough questions no. for you. <laughs> I wanted yeah, I heard, to. Uh, heard today's going to be a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask, what happened with this uh, this press release um, from GPD yesterday or last night on the the fatal uh, crash that ended up not being fatal? How does that happen? Uh, you know, I, I was uh, informed of the, the crash, and at the time of the crash, uh, Sabrina, the, the the victim did receive uh, some very serious um, injuries. And, uh, you know, apparently there was a breakdown in communication between uh, the, the dispatch, uh, the field supervisor, uh, up to our public information officer, because even I was informed that the victim had unfortunately was that supposedly passed away. You know, uh, we, we make mistakes just like everybody else, you know, and we just have to own up to it. Uh, you know, um, you know, to the family of uh, the, the victim, uh, we, we apologize uh, for our, our error in reporting that uh, uh, your, your, your loved one had passed away. Uh, the, the, the good news is that the victim is still alive and is still being treated at GRMC. And, uh, you know, it's not the first time it's happened. I've actually seen this play out uh, maybe at least once or twice in my career in the Guam Police Department. Yeah. But uh, it doesn't excuse uh, uh, the... the the, the press release it doesn't excuse um, uh, our error, and uh, we apologize. Yeah, I think it's 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 very rare uh, that I I've actually seen this. Um, have, I can't even remember the last time, but I do know that it is. It has happened uh, in the past, but it's been so long since uh, I've seen a, a retraction uh, like this. Uh, wanted to follow up on um, that multi-agency. Uh, investigation. Um, I know you were you were uh, looking into you know your authority and your jurisdiction into whether you can actually go into another you know a branch of government and and look into what they yes do. yes. So, so I wanted to clarify that a little bit further. So you know if we go back to the first uh, the, the the letter from uh, uh, Senator uh, Peter Terlai, mm -hmm. uh, you know if you look at the 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 letter, it, it says internal affairs or internal investigations into what was playing out into the, the, the in the Mark Mayo trial, I believe. And so I'd like to clarify that uh, my statement was that we don't do investigations uh, in in, inter in in the internal sense, in the administrative investigations. I, I honestly, I have no, I don't know of, of me, the Guam Police Department, having any authority to go do disciplinary type of investigations into the courts or to probation or to the airport or to the port. I, I don't have that authority because uh, internal affairs uh, or administrative investigations are are meant uh, for adverse action type of uh, discipline. And so, you know, only that the agency head has that authority to administer disciplinary action. And so I don't ha I don't see any any authority that I have to go into any agency or even another branch of government for that matter to do internal affairs investigation. Now criminal investigations, uh, I have uh, that that authority to go uh, do criminal investigations uh, for any crime that occurs on the island. Uh, that I have the authority to do. And uh, d definitely, that's something that uh, we, we're, we're looking into. Uh, but we're not doing this alone. You know, uh, we're, we're also working with um, uh, the AG's office as to how best to move forward. Uh, and you know, the first thing you need to do is look at the case and determine if there is any uh, alleged wrongdoing or any crime that has been committed. And then, you know, the, the next thing to do is look at whether or not. Uh, uh, the time has lapsed, you know, the statute of limitation, 
because you know you don't want to spend a lot of money uh, with your resources going in and investigating crimes where you know the outcome is well the statute of limitation has expired and we can't take this case to court you know and we, we can't prosecute anybody and you know we've invested man hours man days and, and resources into a case that can't move forward so that's one of the the things that we need to look at also is the statute of limitation when did these these acts uh, supposed criminal acts play out and uh, do we have um, enough time left in the statute uh, to pursue a case criminally a criminal investigation so can you just kind of just uh, clarify then because i remember when uh, there was all kinds of stuff going on at the uh, department of corrections and gpd was uh, called in to conduct an internal affairs uh, investigation and i'm not even sure if we got any results from that doc uh, investigation from a, a few years uh, back. So what would be the difference for GPD to go so, in and could, go ahead? So so we provide support. Uh, and, and let me give you an example, right? Uh, we had the, the shooting with uh, Xavier Tatalto. Uh, I called in uh, Customs. They're an executive branch uh, uh, agency. I called Customs in to, uh, to come in and provide me support uh, by uh, in, uh, conducting the investigation into the officers. So uh, we've, we've supported uh, the, the Department of Corrections in their internal affairs investigations. Uh, vice versa, Customs has come in and, and helped support me. And uh, Customs called me out as his chief in I have a, uh, this investigation into my personnel. But at the end of the day, uh, really the only person that can administer discipline, uh, the only person that can administer any type of adverse action is the department yet. So I cannot go over and administer a suspension for uh, Mr. Ike Pareto. I, I don't have that authority. And uh, so, so that's what I mean in, in that sense. Yeah. So yeah. we don't do internal affairs investigations. And uh, honestly, I, I think, uh, I don't know if the question has been asked of the court, you know, did, did they do anything and you know, whether or not they're gonna talk about it, it's up to them. Yeah, right. there's an oversight mm -hmm. hearing today uh, yeah. with, the, with the court. Um, the judiciary. Right. Chief, I, I get what you're saying about not being able to do the internal affairs, of, obviously investigations, right, with the other uh, agencies. But what, again, uh, if when you talk about the criminal activity, I think with this whole gambling thing, there's different issues. One is that um, we had heard, and I think was even confirmed in the Civil Service uh, Commission documents, that there were large amounts of money uh, being won, which I had heard that's what triggered the feds looking at it because there, uh, allegedly some people weren't paying taxes, taxes on this. But then the other side of it where I wonder if it becomes criminal is that it was being, uh, this gambling app was being used on the clock, which to me is kind of like almost like an, I, I guess maybe official misconduct type of thing. Uh, so what about that if, if we have these uh, instances or allegations where uh, people who work in different agencies we're doing that. Is it still a disciplinary thing to you, or does it now enter the criminal realm? Oh, uh, Chris, absolutely, uh, absolutely. If you know, again, uh, you talk about official misconduct in, in the context of uh, the, the gambling, um, this gambling that um, has been reported or you know being played out in this civil service commission case. And uh, yeah, so definitely, if you're using uh, government resources, a government computer, government time. And, you know, you're dedicating two or three hours to sitting in front of a government computer uh, in a government office uh, gambling, then, then that's uh, that, that's a crime. That, that's uh, definitely official misconduct. And uh, there's probably other, other uh, crimes involved. Uh, that is definitely criminal. Uh, but again, uh, because this case is uh, not being led by any government of Guam agency, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're waiting to, to, you know, because we haven't seen any indictments. We haven't seen any criminal cases that have been filed. And so we, we don't know, uh, honestly, we don't know how this is going to play out. Well, we don't know. We don't know what the players are. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know all the names of uh, everybody. And so uh, I think uh, myself and probably a couple other uh, directors, agency heads, you know, we're just uh, waiting and uh, to, to see how this thing plays out, uh, so that how this plays out, you know, helps helps us determine how we take action, uh, both uh, administratively in the uh, the context of internal affairs investigations, 
and possibly, uh, you know, even working maybe with the AGs in, in a criminal investigation uh, for exactly what you're talking about, you know, the official misconduct, the, the misuse of government property and resources, uh, timing in while you're, you know, being on the clock and playing, you know, that it's um, probably a form of theft. I know when we had spoken uh, weeks back when this story first uh, came out, uh, you conf- what you did confirm is that um, there was uh, an investigation uh, that you were conducting, GPD was conducting into a single officer, but you didn't confirm whether or not it was related right, to this airport gambling um, uh, incident. Can you confirm that now, that the, the single officer that is, uh, uh, you were investigating uh, is connected? Uh, Ray, what I can confirm is that uh, my investigation, uh, my opening of an investigation was not directly related to the, the airport case. That, that I can confirm. It's not directly. I, I, I received information from a var- variety of different methods and means. And so mm-hmm. I, I can confirm that uh, my investigation that, that I opened was not uh, in uh, any way, shape, or form to what played out in the airport case. Can you confirm whether or not then um, it is related, though, to online gambling? That the investigation? That you, you uh, opened? No, not, not at this point, yeah. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm still waiting for, for things to, to play out. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I've been waiting for things to play out uh, yeah. with uh, the criminal investigation. Mm-hmm. Are you able to confirm, Chief, if there are other officers in the Guam Police Department who are being investigated for any type of involvement with this uh, online gambling app? Not that I'm aware of, uh, Chris. And, and honestly, I've only re- I only am aware of one name, right. and, and that that's the only name I can act upon. Uh, I don't know of any other names. Uh, I haven't been made aware of. I haven't received any documents, read any documents, or gotten any calls uh, of any other officers. You know, when you hear uh, not not to say that there are other there there are no other officers involved. Uh, I can say you know, uh, I cannot say that there's no other officers involved because I don't know the whole case. Um, mm-hmm. But I think uh, you know, in the documents that have uh, been released uh, or obtained from CSC, uh, I believe there's allegations of clusters of government employees or employees from other agencies, not by name, uh, just by agency, right? There's right. clusters of officers from the Guam police. I believe there was mention of, of, I think, other employees from other agencies. I, I'm, I'm not going to name them because I, I you know, I, I don't have the documents in front of me. But I think it was the uh, Guam Fire, um, and then other, it was other law enforcement. Right, the, the, but there were only right. um, only one or two names. Right, the, uh, yeah, one yeah. of the names, though, Chief, was was a, the police officer, as you, as you mentioned. So this particular police officer that was named and identified in the CSC documents, uh, are you conducting an investigation into this officer? Yes, and I remember I, I told you that uh, we, we, we are doing an investigation. But again, uh, the, the, the name of the officer and... Uh, my investigation was not prefaced on what was found or what you found in the airport case. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, Chief, I just wanted to uh, get a couple. Um, so, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. So, so did you, uh, back to that multi-agency uh, investigation at the request of the oversight chair, have you responded to his letter in writing? Uh no, I'm, I'm actually uh, the the co-chair for the Committee on Public Safety, oh, Senator sorry. Frank Lock, yeah. Jr., mm-hmm. uh, has reached out to me and uh, he's asked me uh, to schedule a meeting to come in and see him to talk about this. Okay. So uh, I, I think Senator uh, Pito Terlai has passed this off to his co-chair, yeah. you know, understanding that, you know, he may have some familial connection to what was played out in uh, district court. When, when are you meeting with uh, Senator Bloss? Uh, sometime this week. Uh, de- definitely sometime this week. Uh, he did reach out to me uh, last week, Friday. And, uh, you know, Monday was a holiday, so he was going to have his staff uh, reach out uh, to my secretary uh, so that we can schedule a meeting. Well, Chief, I just wanted to ask about this um, 
a drive through restaurant in Des Moines? Uh, uh, Jerry Kitchen? No, there's no, the, 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 there's no drive through restaurant. Uh, which one? J- Jerry Kitchen. Oh, the, the crash that occurred. Yeah, yeah. No, it's the, everyone's saying, oh, there's a new drive through restaurant in Des Moines. Jerry Kitchen. That's the joke that's going around, Chief. No, but because we were mm-hmm. able to confirm just from a variety of uh, police sources that uh, there was an off-duty uh, police officer in the in the vehicle. Uh, can can you confirm that, Chief? Uh, yeah, I've been informed uh, that there there was a uh, an off-duty police officer that was present in the vehicle. Yes. And so, are, are in your opinion, are, are because of that? Do you think people are kind of reading a lot into this um, incident and and maybe jumping to conclusions that because uh, again the the public right the number one question they have is like how the hell do you crash like that and you know no one gets arrested uh there's just a single citation uh that was given so i mean and i know because you you spent so much time in the highway patrol Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. division so this is kind of like right up your alley if you could just explain to uh people um because it does give the appearance that oh if there's a cop riding in (coughs) The vehicle then a cop responds you know cops helping cops the same it, i mean it happens in any type of uh, professional field but it, there is that perception that that's why we didn't see an arrest or that's why we only saw a ticket or you know so i, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of respond to that sure uh you, you know chris I, i've been involved uh, in crashes myself as a police officer uh as a police officer i you know i I've also uh i'll tell you i was first out of the academy and uh I, I was heading to work and it was uh, speeding and i got a ticket from a fellow police officer who didn't recognize me because i was fresh off the boat <laughs> or for lack of a better way of describing it but you know uh, whenever uh police officers are involved you know they're held accountable uh whether through a citation, whether through disciplinary action. Uh, and I myself have been held accountable for, in that case, on that day, my, my actions. Uh, we we investigate thousands and thousands of traffic crashes. And it doesn't matter who's involved, uh, the officers uh, use their discretion, whether or not to cite a person for being involved in a traffic crash. And uh, in, in this case, I, I had the opportunity to read the report. Uh, the vehicle was attempting to execute a left turn from Route 1 onto uh, Route 14. That is a 90 degree uh, turn. Okay. And so uh, apparently, uh, based on how the operator was operating the vehicle, uh, they were not operating it prudently. Uh, the operator was cited for imprudent driving. And so, uh, there was an off-duty police officer in, in the car, and like you said, um, you know, uh, there, there's conspiracy theories that uh, there, there was this massive cover-up. And uh, nothing that I know of now, based on what I've read, uh, could be further than the truth. Uh, I, I think that the officer held the driver accountable for uh, their action. And, uh, you know, uh, there, I'm sure there, there's other officers who have been in cars, you know, with other people driving. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what, what the, the, the conspiracy theories are. But, you know, if you have information uh, and, and if, you, if you believe that the presence of the officer uh, may have caused certain inaction, or certain actions to occur, then, you know, please come forward. Now we have internal affairs section. If you believe that the presence of the officer influenced the outcome of this investigation, of this crash, then uh, please come forward. I mean, we, we have auto run off roadway cases probably every day. Right. You know, people run off the road, people lose control of their cars. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes when you want to hit the brake, you hit the gas. You know that that's that's common in in, uh, in, in some crashes. You know, yeah. uh, people hit the wrong pedal and they accelerate instead of brake. And uh, it's my understanding that that's what occurred in this investigation. Chief, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I think so, people are just you yeah. know because of the magnitude of the damages. Right, yeah. uh, 
a, a, a business owner just lost, you know, a thousands of dollars. And so I think right. when you hear, ah, a, a ticket, a ticket for imprudent driving. Right. And, and that's it. There was no alcohol involved. There was no, you know, yeah. and no yeah. one was yeah. under the influence. Right. It was but, but, just, I lost control of my vehicle. Yeah. And but Chief, I, I wanted, if you, if you were able to confirm uh, if the officer who was the passenger in the vehicle was the granddaughter of the oversight chair, Senator Pito Terlai? You know, uh, I'm not going to confirm anything. Like I said, you know, uh, the, the case is what it is. And like I said, if people think there's impropriety on the part of the officer uh, that investigated the case or the officer that was involved um, uh, as a passenger, uh, then, you know, I don't have that information in front of me, but if you have that information, you want to share it uh, with uh, internal affairs section. If you want to share it anonymously through crime stoppers, you know, please do so. Uh, but you know, I, I think we need, we need to just maybe just put it to rest because uh, unless we have in, uh, unless we have information for me to move forward on, uh, I don't see how it would be uh, fair to my officers to open up an investigation uh, based on just uh, mere. I, I don't even know what the word is that I can, can use to say it. You know. Supposition? Yeah, I guess yeah. if that's what it's going to be called, supposition. Yeah. But, but Chief, I mean, just, you know, if, if you could just entertain this. So, I mean, outside looking in, right, uh, let's say that, and we were able to confirm that it was the granddaughter of the oversight chair, but when yeah. you have an officer on a scene, it just kind of creates that perception that, oh, okay, that's what happened or, or whatever. Um, but you're standing by the officer uh, who res who responded to the accident, right? And and their handling of, of this incident. Uh, Chris, I'm I'm standing by my officers because that's that's the information that we have. Okay. I, again, like I said, that's the only information that I have right now. Uh, if I, I can open up uh, an investigation, uh, criminal and, and, and administrative, if I have more information that I can proceed on, really. Okay. If, if you have something and you know something, then uh, and you believe I, I, you know I have information to move forward on, then I, I would uh, be more than glad uh, to, to hold my officers accountable. But uh, like, I, like I said, if it's just because an officer was there, an off duty officer was there, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that uh, that's enough. Uh, for, for us to make assumptions. Right. No, we're just asking, Chief. Yeah. I'm sure. How, how many people were in the yeah, car? No, I understand, I understand yeah. and, I, and I understand the concern of the public, but I like the public to know too, Chris. I, I agree that, you know, if somebody did something wrong, then I'd be the first one to to, to open up the, the investigations, uh, whether criminal or administrative, definitely. How but many? If, but if. But. How many people were in the car, in the Jeep? I think there was maybe four or five is what, it, is what I was uh, informed of, what I read. Mm -hmm. And were all four and five on the scene um, when the cops arrived? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, did... Are you in the police report? Does it say that everybody was interviewed that was in the car? So traffic crashes are are are, are uh, investigated a little bit differently than a criminal case. Mm -hmm. So let's say I come to a crash and I have two parties, right? I have a driver of one car and I have a driver of another car. And so it doesn't say that uh, Officer Ignacio went and interviewed the driver of vehicle one and this is their story. Uh, it doesn't say that Officer Nosho then goes to interview driver of vehicle two, and this is their story. What I do is I gather the statement from the driver of vehicle one and the driver of vehicle two, right? And in this case, uh, I make a synopsis or a finding of what, what occurred. So let's say I'm coming out of uh, Revan Tax parking lot, right? And uh, the and a vehicle, vehicle one is going north on Route 16, and I'm uh, the other driver's coming out of uh, Revan Tax parking lot. So what this, uh, and then a, a T-bone collision occurs. What happens then is that the synopsis will read, 
Okay, vehicle one was traveling north on Route 16. Uh, vehicle two attempting to execute a left turn from a uh, parking lot of Remitax onto Route 16 failed to yield, right? And and uh, uh, and a crash occurred. That's how it will read in a crash report. It's a synopsis based on the totality of all the interviews that were conducted and the evidence on the scene, mm -hmm. right? So the evidence on the scene will support that there's a T-bone collision. You know, the damages on vehicle two would be to the front, right? And the damages on vehicle one will be on the passenger side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so the, the evidence, the damages to the car support the findings that vehicle two fell to yield to vehicle one right of way. Okay. And, and so if there's passengers in the car, there, there are witnesses to it, they're identified as passengers in the car. If there's injuries to the passengers in the car, there's their injuries are noted, you know, uh, their, their seating location is noted. Uh, whether or not the airbags are deployed would be noted. You know, it's a very uh, detailed report. Uh, and it's just, most of it is just pull down tabs, you know, uh, yes or no tabs. But, uh, it doesn't say that uh, I got to the scene, I interviewed five people, and there's five different statements. That That's not how a crash report is written. Mm -hmm. So if there were people in that restaurant um, and they were injured, would we still be looking at an imprudent driving ticket? Uh, again, probably you know, probably not. I mean, we, we look at uh, a bunch of different uh, the injuries and uh, what was sustained, uh, you know, uh, I think you know there was no nobody at the time, the, the time of the day, and and the investigation is, is driven by the, the facts of the case. Mm -hmm. uh, th those are the facts of the case, and, and really, like I said, man, if, if there's anybody that has any information contrary to what we have in the police report, mm -hmm. you know, please let me know. So, uh, I'd be more than more than glad to look into it. So four or five people in, in the Jeep, um, imprudent driving ticket. What prompted, um, was there anything in the report that uh, indicated what was the state of mind of the driver? Why uh, she, uh, is it a she, the driver? Or is it? Uh, the, the driver, yeah. It's the, one, okay. the driver lost control. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what, what caused uh, her to lose control? Was there an argument uh, in the vehicle uh, or she just got confused with, oh, I'm pressing the gas, not the brake? I mean, what? Oh, how'd that pedal get there? Yeah. It's really tricky when there's three pedals and it's thick because then you got the clutch and uh, that just throws off the whole. Uh, I, again, Bree, we, we have a lot of auto random roadway cases. Uh, there's nothing unusual about this case uh, other than they, they lost control and they drove through a restaurant. I think that's the most unusual thing about this case. But you know, people run off the road and and, and crash into uh, uh, tele uh, power poles. I mean, uh, how many fatalities have we had? You know, people running off the road, losing control, and crashing into power poles, right? Yeah. And so, Chief, uh, um, do you know how what, long? What, what usually is one of the cases, one of the one of the causes for people to lose control, right? Sometimes speeding. Mm -hmm. right? It's one of the more common factors that you know, we find in traffic fatalities. Yeah, I know. But if yeah. I was the business owner, I'd want to know, well, why did she, what happened in that car? Yeah. You know, um, why, what were the circumstances that led up to somebody destroying my business? Mm -hmm. You know. Chief, yeah, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, somebody lost control of their car and ran into your into the business. You know, unfortunately, that, that's really uh, what, what happened. What happened. Yeah. yeah. Chief, do you know how long uh, after the crash the off the responding officer was on the scene? Uh, not sure. I'm not sure. Are you asking? Hold on, I have to put on my. Um, You're reading glasses. My magnifying, <laughs> my magnifying glasses. No, it says it occurred at I think one thirty. One thirty in the morning. 
I believe that's what I'm reading. One thirty. Sounds in the like morning. they're out and about. Uh, yeah. One thirty in the morning, and it looks like the officer got there about uh, ten minutes later. Is what I'm reading. So you aren't able to deduce from the report, uh, Chief, if anyone left the scene of the accident? Uh, yeah, there's no indication that uh, anybody left the... Yeah. Okay. There's nothing here that tells me that somebody left the scene. Mm -hmm. And then again, you know, Chris, uh, uh, you know, if a passenger leaves the scene, uh, you know, it's not unusual for people to leave the scene of a crash uh, if they're a passenger. Uh, the, the the duty to stay behind it rests upon the driver of the vehicle mm -hmm. by law. Okay, so we're all clear here. Uh, the driver uh, made, lost control. The, the did a ninety was degree yeah. a ninety degree turn. So that's like like that. Well, they and didn't make the full ninety though, Bree. They probably made like about a sixty. <laughs> was the road was it raining? I told you again, you're having me have to put on my magnifying glasses. Uh, was it raining? Was it raining? You could just send us a copy of that, Chief, because I yeah. got good eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Uh, I'll get back to you. I'm going okay. to yeah. have to read the report. Right. But, um, but uh, a ticket for imprudent driving, um, what's the fine for that? I have no idea. Okay. All right. Okay. Stand by your, your officers who responded. Um, there was an off-duty police officer in the vehicle. Um, and if anybody has any information that would contradict um, anything uh, in this police report and anything that you have said to just give uh, GPD a call. Right. Uh, yes, you know, because if there's, you know, there's concern by, by, by the, the community. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the findings of the officers and the officer that was off-duty and involved are above board. And so really, if they have any concerns or they have any information uh, uh, contrary to what we know uh, or what I know at this point, then, you know, please come forward uh, because I, I definitely would uh, be the first to look into it. But uh, notwithstanding anything else, you know, uh, I have to go with what, what's in front of me and, and that's the whole information now at this point. Uh, but you know, uh, please come forward if you have any information because uh, you want you want to make sure that uh, the officers uh, are treated the same way as any other person in the public. Uh, they all everybody deserves uh, to be treated fairly uh, by by the police. Amen. All right. Thank you, Chief. Um, I, Chief, we appreciate you standing in and answering uh, the questions. No problem, Chris. Uh, Serena, thank you for having me again uh, on your show. I would truly do appreciate it. Right. Really appreciate and it. And Chief, we're always looking for those, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, bad apples, we talk about that, but we're also looking for those good mangoes in the department. So if, if <laughs> any, have any, like, officers doing a great job, you want to uh, get them out here, highlight, you know, anything that they're doing. And I know because PCOR 3, a lot of your outreach that Sergeant Tapao uh, usually uh, leads is going to start up again. So we just want to be part of that conversation, too. Uh, I, I believe I have a lot of good officers, Chris, in the Bomb Police Department, and they're up, they're outstanding uh, individuals, and they come to work day in and day out to keep our community safe. Absolutely, Thank I you, believe Chief. in my officers. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Chief.